All right, you guys, welcome to this episode of the Inspired to Be You podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Krebs, and I'm unbelievably excited and privileged to have um, one of one of the most renowned relationship experts that I've ever come across. I have had the opportunity to um, dive deep into his content on his YouTube channel and all of the things that I've listened to have just blown my mind. Um, Cody, welcome to the Inspire TV show, Mr. Thank Cody you. Butler. Thank you. What a what a what an introduction. No expectations, right? <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. No doubt. <laughs> oh goodness me. Um, let's just have a coffee shop chat. I want to pick your brain about all things relationship. And especially, I have a huge male following, which I'm really excited about. And I'd love to really help them um, on that perspective as well. So my first question for you is, in your years of experience, um, what do you, um, sorry, in your years of experience, what have you found to be the key elements that contributes to a successful relationship? Well, if we're going to boil it down to one thing, it's going to be emotional safety and security. So what I mean by that, I mean, that's quite an abstract term, right? So let's make that concrete. Emotional safety is the ability to be 100% of yourself 100% of the time. That's going to be the gold standard of emotional safety. 0% of yourself 0% of the time is going to be the worst. So the closer your partner and yourself as well are to that ability to allow the other person and the other person to allow you to really be 100% of yourself 100% of the time and have that freedom within the relationship, that's really going to determine whether the relationship is successful or not. Oh, that that is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And you know what? It does come down to honoring yourself, doesn't it? And making yeah. sure that you're feeling yourself. So you're showing up with the best version of you instead of what's left of you. And I, I really think that's the best way people can do that is to honor themselves. Okay, next question. I've got so many good ones for you. I can't even pick which ones are the best. <laughs> All right. So let's go to what are some of the most common reasons that men find themselves living a life that they really don't like? Well, it's really, it's really, honestly, it comes down to a lack of consciousness. And I know that's kind of a wooey spiritual term, but con you know, let, again, let's define consciousness. Let's bring it out. Like one of the things I really like to do, Amanda, is take abstract terms and make them concrete concrete language is our friend abstraction is the enemy and when i say consciousness become conscious what that means is to make a conscious decision in the moment so what most of us are doing we're not making conscious decisions we're operating out of preconditioned programming we're, we're running old patterns and we're making decisions in the moment that are not decisions they're just habits we're just we're just bringing out habits and we're not actually conscious of the decision that we're making. And we're not actually conscious of the fact that that decision is caused and it's going to have an effect. So consciousness in this instance is being aware of what am I thinking right now? What decision am I about to make? Is that decision my choice or somebody else's? And the fact that that decision is caused and what is the effect of that cause going to be? And when we can move to that place of consciousness going, okay, this is my decision. I'm aware that it's a cause and, and I'm aware that it has an effect. I'm aware of what that effect is. Now life is a choice, not a reaction to uh, a consequence that you didn't choose the cause of or you didn't consciously choose the cause of. Wow. It's so you you say it so simply. And when you when you hear it, it's just like it's like that automatic aha moment of <laughs> that really, truly makes sense. And that goes for men or women. Of right, but it's I'm loving the male perspective on this because yep. I think that um, a lot of the times, especially being a female, the men tend to get left out. Their perspective tends to gets tends yep. to tends to be left out. So I'm really glad to have you on here, being able to see both sides of things, but really having the male perspective as well. Um, let's tr how can men identify what they are what they truly want in life? Like what steps could they take? Well, it really, it really comes down to who do you want to be? It's not, it's not so much what do you want out of life? Like what you want out of life is a byproduct. Again, that's an effect. Like life is, a, life is a game of cause and effect. And one of the things I like to say is, you know, it's about process, not product. So a good example of that is if we, you know, if we want ice in our life, we have to understand the process of, of creating ice. And that is you need water and you need a sub-zero environment. There's, there's nothing you can do 
to create eyes other than understand the process and then recreate that process. You don't, if you understand the process, you don't have to sit in front of your freezer at night going, God, please give me ice, please. I'm begging you. Uh, it, it's a, it's a foregone <laughs> conclusion. Life, human beings and life and the universe is very orderly. It follows laws and rules and regulations. And it is, it is a game of cause and effect. And a lot of times we choose, we chase effect without understanding the cause. And I can guarantee you as a man or as a woman, as a woman, everything you want, the cause of those effects are going to be honesty, self-honesty, confidence, integrity, the ability to be truthful with yourself, the ability to have clarity, the ability to be conscious and understand that this is a game of cause and effect. Everything else is simply an effect. And there are certain core um, principles that, that that we teach actually that that I teach that will give everybody male or female the result that they're looking for because what you want is to be happy I can tell you with a surety everything that you're chasing leads to one path and that's the path of happiness that's what you're going after and those 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 elements are that the 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 causes that will unfailingly bring you to the effect that you're looking for it's unconditional positive regard it's an attitude of gratitude and it's the heart of the servant. When you approach life with gratitude, servitude and unconditional positive regard for it, it will respond positively to you. When, when your regard is very conditional or negative, when your heart is one of taking and your attitude is one of ingratitude, life will also respond to you in a way that's predictable, but it's not going to be the path that you want for sure. That's amazing. I want to just throw in here. So, when I was starting in the beginning of my personal development journey and, and um, yeah. I had actually outgrown my husband, we had ended up having an amicable separation truly because I wanted to grow and he wasn't ready to do so, mm. which is fine, but we figured that all out. Um, so when I was going into to uh, learn all of this stuff about me, what I did learn was if we're not doing certain things in life, one being if we're not co-creating our lives, if we are not serving people around us, family, friends, whoever, if we're not teaching the things that we learn, then we're not really aligned with, with ourselves in general, like our spirits and our souls. So it's really neat to hear that perspective on the how you're building that for gentlemen and showing them these tools. It's really incredible. Next question. How important is it for self-reflection and understanding personal values in a process of creating a life that aligns with one's desires? Oh, it's absolutely critical, Amanda. If you if you violate your own value system, prepare for pain. It's in the mail. You know, it's like, you know, there's lots of cliches. The man that stands for nothing will fall for anything and all of these things. The 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 reality is happiness comes from the fulfillment of your full potential or productively mm -hmm. taking steps towards your full potential. You don't necessarily have to be there, but it's like, you know, you have more to give this world than you've given it so far, or you wouldn't be doing this. The men and the women that are listening to this know you have more to give to this world, or you wouldn't be listening to this podcast. And your happiness yes. depends on the fulfillment of that potential. You, you know, you recognize it, and go, I have more to give. I, I'm 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 a seed right now that hasn't been planted, or I'm a seed that hasn't grown yet. And ultimately, your happiness is going to depend on on honestly recognizing that and going, hey, look, I have more to give. I haven't given it yet. And and I'm not going to rest until I reach that full potential. Wow. Okay, you guys, I want you to actually stop this <laughs> and go back about 30 <laughs> seconds here. And listen to that all over again. I've got goosebumps, Cody. I have goosebumps. Um, okay, let, so this let me, is can a I throw really... something. Can I throw something yeah, out? Yeah, do that? it up. So again, like, so obviously I'm in the marriage space, the relationship space, and I and and it's like again, when when we're working with men that are that are in broken situations, it's like, how attractive is that? Like when you look at a man, a man that is recognizing that he has potential and more potential and act than he's fulfilling, and actually taking steps to pro proactively fulfill that. That's a very attractive thing to a woman. hundred percent. Vice versa. You know, it's like, this is, this is what attraction is about. Attraction is behaviorally based. And it's like, when, when you start to recognize, you know, I, I have infinite potential, but I'm finite right now. And you start to move towards that infinite potential. Everyone around you is going to go, holy smoke, I've got infinite potential too. 
How can men overcome fear or resistance to change when they're trying to pursue a life they truly want? So the, so the first thing is, is in that question is going to be, well, figure out what a life you truly want is. That That's going to be the first thing, right? The reason most people don't get what they want is because they don't know what they want. You know, it's like they, the universe asks them, what do you want, Cody? And you go, oh, I don't know. Your wish is my command. There you go. You've got a bunch of nothingness. That's exactly what you asked for. But the, you know, the second part to that question, I think, is going to be to recognize that uh, every emotion has a physiological equivalent. And we understand that with fear, right? So with fear, what is the physiological equivalent that comes with fear? Well, it's going to be fight or flight. If we're in right. a state of fear, then fight or flight is the response. And in a marriage situation, for sure, but in life in general, if you're in a state of fear in your marriage and you're in a fight or flight situation, which is which of those two is helping your marriage? Fight, Fighting with your wife or husband or fleeing from them, abandoning them? It's like fear is an incredibly destructive state and it can only produce destruction. And... You know, there's a list of emotions. We can start with shame, guilt, apathy, fear, depression, pride. These are all the negative. These are all emotions that produce an absolutely negative outcome in your life. If you're in a state of fear, if you're in a state of apathy, if you're in a state of depression, if you're in a state of guilt or shame, nothing good is going to happen to you. I can assure you of that. I can assure you of that. But when we go above that line, when you when you achieve the highest state, which the lowest highest state, by the way, is courage. We've got courage, willingness, neutrality, joy, peace, love. When you're in these states, genuinely, nothing bad can happen to you. Only good stuff can happen. So the great thing about fear, um, well, let me just back that up a second. The first state there is courage. Well, the great thing about fear is that courage is fear with action added to it. So if you're in a state of fear right now, all you have to do is add action to that fear and you are in a state of courage now good things are going to happen to you you know we and when we're in a state wow. of fear we can go one of two ways we can go I'm, I'm in a state of fear i'm going to fear this is terrible and i'm going to flee or fight or you can go i'm going to i'm in a state of fear wow what an opportunity because all i need to do is add action to this fear and now i'm in a state of courage and again yeah. attraction is behaviorally based right if you if you if you are a man or a woman who's constantly fearful what are you attracting to you very little if you are a man or a woman that is constantly in a state of courage what are you attracting to you good things that's incredible i say that all the time to people that i'm working with as well is like are you going to let your fears keep you stuck or are you going to allow it to propel you forward and that's been an, a massive thing with a lot of people and they don't even don't even recognize it because fear is almost fear is almost a lie you know it's got it's got when you physically think about fear the way your body feels is very close to excitement so we can choose to be scared or we can choose to get excited as i say a lot of the time as well oh yeah. my goodness okay do you have something to add there no i said absolutely i i, I think you're spot on there amanda very very wise very good thank you what what role does the uh, what role does the mindset and self belief play in helping a man transform in his life? It's everything. I mean, you are your mind. That that's what that's what you are. Like any, if you think you're anything <clears throat> other than your mind, you're 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 delusional. You're living you're living a life delusion, a life of delusion, and you, you're not gonna. I mean, if we think back to it, the the person inside of us, which we can call it a mind or soul or whatever. It's like, I was here at the age of five. I was here at the age of 25. I was here at the age of 45. The, the person inside of me has witnessed all of that and hasn't changed at all. Like what has changed is the external representation of that mind. My body's changed. My circumstances have changed. But ultimately, you know, it's, it's the stand. Everything starts with a thought. Everything starts with a thought. Like if you're going to be if you're going to behave in a loving way towards your spouse, that starts with a thought. You think I'm going to say something nice or I'm going to do something nice. If you're going to have, behave in an abusive way, it's it starts with a thought. You have to think I'm going to behave abusively now. And that's where getting back to the first question, we're talking about consciousness, right? It's like we have to become consciousness or, or conscious that our mind is conscious and has the ability to choose in the moment. And it doesn't it doesn't matter where you are in life and it doesn't matter what situations you've created you have the ability to change that in, in you know men ask me all the time is it is it possible to change my 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 marriage is it possible to change my life of course it is well why because you can change 
because yeah. you can change. Your, your situation can change because you can change. And if you change, it will change. You know, if we're talking to someone and we go, is it possible for you to change? No, absolutely not. Then there's no hope for you. What you have is what you're always going to have. So this this is the joy of life, right? Well, as long as there's hope, well, as long as there's breath in the body, there's hope. Oh, yes. Once breath Beautiful. leaves the body, then it's a different story. I don't know what happens after that. I'm not going to presume to talk. Not talk I'm not going to talk about that because I don't presume. <laughs> like we'll just argue and fight if we talk about that. But I know I can tell you categorically. If there is hope in your body, there is hope for you. Or if there is if there is breath in your body, there is hope for you. And that starts with the mind. The mind decides if there's hope or not. Right. That's you're incredible. You blew my mind. Okay. So I'm actually going to throw one at you here. So coming from the perspective of male trauma, yeah, I want to know what you recommend to a gentleman that has been mentally physically emotionally spiritually abused himself yeah. how do you help him how do you said how would you help him kind of move through that so the first thing i i, I would like I, i'm going to get controversial here and probably piss some people off but i'm like do it anybody that's identifying with that is in a victim mentality for one i've okay. been abused okay well maybe you have maybe you haven't but that your you, your mind is telling you you've been abused and that's moved you to a victim mentality and, and honestly you've just made yourself the world's biggest shit magnet you know the, the, the sec the second thing is like you don't know what you don't know i dealt with this for a long time I'm, I'm i'll be brutally honest with you and share a little bit if that's all right like yeah i've had drinking problems in my life you know and it's like that's part of my story if you check any of my stuff out i talk about that and for the longest time i blamed my father and said i was never good enough i could never please him i was never good enough recently i've come to the conclusion he was never good enough for me if i'm being brutally honest I, he, his job wasn't prestigious enough the house he put us in wasn't good enough the clothes he closed me in wasn't good enough the food he put on my table wasn't to my liking the, the hotels we stayed on in one didn't have enough stars. We didn't go out to eat enough. And, and I vocalized that to him over and over again. And it's like the number of times that I told my father he wasn't good enough, I can't count. The number of times he told me I wasn't good enough was zero. And, and, and for the longest period of my life, I made the statement, I had a drinking problem because I was never good enough for my father. And... I was trying to escape from that. But if I'm being honest, did my father have a drinking problem because I, he was never good enough for me and he was trying to escape from me? Is, is wow. that the truth? You know, and it's like straight away, I'm like, it takes me out of, it takes me out of the victim mode and makes me the victimizer. And again, for years, I said, I spoke in ways like my father's fixed his ways and we've made up and I've forgiven him. Like there's humility in me and, and I'm able to forgive. And the reality is it's like, it's the other way round. It's the other way round. It's like for, for, for 20 years growing up, I told him repeatedly he wasn't good enough for me. Never once did wow. I think, never once did I think that I was causing him trauma. And, and I would I, I would encourage anybody that's in a position that's going, I'm traumatized. Okay, well, I understand and I accept that. I was traumatized, but I caused the trauma. I was responsible for the trauma and I also inflicted the trauma on other people. So I would encourage you to, yes, you're traumatized. I'm not going to belittle that, but I would also encourage you to move out of the, that victim mode and say, well, maybe I'm responsible as well for inflicting trauma on others. And maybe it's my role to heal other people. Maybe it's not for me to sit here at this point and just take and say, and you need to heal me because I'm traumatized that that would be the productive position I would take. Wow. And again, this goes both ways, you guys. We don't want to, we do not want to segregate anybody or leave anybody out, but we are going on the male perspective in this episode because I have the opportunity to have a great man sitting with me. So we're going to utilize to that, that to the best of our ability to help some people, especially men, because I feel like men are expected to be certain things, right? We always talk about the women and how they're expected to do this, this, and this. But let's think about that. Men are also expected to do this, this, and this. And they're not supposed to do this, this, and this. And sensitivity or, I mean, really, were you taught to be conscious of your, your thoughts and feelings? Yes. No, you weren't. As a man, you weren't. 
you know, quit crying. Don't do this. Boys don't do this. Boys don't do that. It's nonsense. We are all human, male or female. So let's get to the next question. What are some of the particular techniques couples can use to improve an open, honest communication in their marriage? Great, great, great question. So there's, there's a couple of parts to the answer. So the first question, when I'm working with a couple, I'll ask them, I'll ask them both the question, question to both of them. Have, have either of you woken up in the morning and gone, I'm going to be a real dickhead and hurt my partner today? I'm going to intentionally set out to hurt my partner. And of course, the answer is, I've never had a yes to that. No one's ever woken up and gone, I'm going to be a real dickhead and hurt my partner today. Okay, so neither one of you started the day with the intention of hurting each other, yet you hurt each other. So can can we agree that the hurt came out of a miscommunication somewhere? Can we see that the hurt was not personal or the or the the offense was not personal? Neither of you started the day with the intention of hurting each other, yet you did. So can we agree that it was a miscommunication? And the answer is always yes. It's like so the secret to the the reconciliation here is in the communication, isn't it? It's not in it's not in the issue that the the story that we're telling about what happened. It's in the way that the story was communicated to each other. So the next part of that is going to be we're taught. I don't. I, I say in the West. I don't know about other cultures, but I know we're taught for sure that we we communicate in a right wrong paradigm. I'm right. You're wrong. I'm right. Yeah. You're wrong. It, it's it's we're, we're in opposition to each other, but you don't have to communicate in a right wrong paradigm. There is another option. The other option is what can I learn from you, Amanda? Like if you mm-hmm. if you say um, we're going to have some views we don't agree on for sure, hundred percent. But you know it's like it, the traditional form of communication is we're going to go into a right wrong paradigm and we're going to de- we're going to debate each other and there'll be a winner and there'll be a loser. But it's like the better question is well you had this belief, Amanda. It's different to mine, but maybe I'm wrong. Can you help me see why you have that belief? Because maybe there's some validity to it. Maybe there's oh some wow! And, and wow! It's basically it's we communicate. I say in a marriage, but period we communicate. Per- period. Most of us. In, in a lower state before we're able to ha- reach a higher state of f- sophistication, we communicate to be understood, not to understand. Oh my gosh. A hundred percent. This is, I seriously, you've set the bar so high, my friend. <laughs> okay. So what was, I, I was going to ask you another one here that just, you just blew my mind. <laughs> blow my mind. So let's get into like parenting styles. I know a lot of families, they have, um, you get a mom and dad together, they, they're great together as a couple, and but their parenting styles end up being completely different. So how can couples navigate different parenting styles, handle family dynamics that may arise within yep. their marriage? So that, that's a great question. So it's going to come back to, to, to the previous answer, really, which is one, seek to understand before being understood. But it's really, it's really in, especially in a parenting situation like this, the key is to focus on what you have in common, not what you don't. So if you and I had a child together and we completely disagreed on how to raise that child, it's like, well, can we can we agree, Amanda, that we both want what's in the best interest of this child? Can can, can we agree that you love this child immensely and you would do anything for this child? Yes. Can you, you know? Can we agree that I love this child and I would do anything for this child? Yes. So this is common ground. We both agree that we want the same outcome, which is what's best for the child. Now the the the, the difference comes on the path to what's best. So again, it's coming down saying, okay, well, we both want what's best for little Johnny, Amanda. So you think that this is best. Help me understand why you think that is best, because it's very possible I'm missing something here. Versus the traditional approach is you need to understand my point of view because you're missing something here. It, it, mm. it's, it's removing, it's moving out of that right, wrong paradigm and moving into the help me understand where you're coming from because I acknowledge that I may be missing something. Is it, is it possible that I'm wrong? Is it possible that I'm lacking information? Is it possible wow. that I overlook something here and you can help me see that? And it, it's going to your partner saying, help me see what I'm missing versus you're deficient and let me show you my superior view because you're a little bit inferior right now and I need you to bring you, I need to bring you up to speed. This this is fundamentally, it's a fundamental flaw in the approach to parenting. You've got to focus on what we agree on, not what we don't agree on, and then arrive, help each other and see what help each other understand and see why we see the situation differently versus you need to see it my way because you're wrong. 
Wow. All righty here. So going, well, we're sticking on this family subject here. And yeah. when family comes finances. So I just got a question for you here. Financial plan in the financial planning department. Yeah. What advice do you have for couples on managing shared finances, um, settling joint or settling joint goals and and negativity yeah. through financial stress and the impact on their marriage? Yeah, great, great question. A lot of you know top cause of divorce, right? Money and then sex or sex and money, right? Two two number two top causes of divorce. So my answer to that question is going to be perspective. So is money a renewable resource? Yes or no? If you lose it, can you get it back? Yes, it's money is a renewable resource. Is your marriage a renewable resource? No, it's not. If you lose it, it's gone. So do you want to trade a renewable resource for a non-renewable resource? Is that a good decision? It is, is trading something that you can, if you lose everything, you can get it back. If you lose your family, you can't, it's done. So is trading something that's renewable and you can get back is it worth sacrificing something that you can't get back for that? And, and, and again, let's take it another layer deeper. What, what's, what's more important, you having the money or you having your family? Or having the family. Okay, so you're going to trade a renewable resource for a non-renewable resource, and you're going to trade a priority for something that's not a priority. Do you see how flawed this is? This is where, this is, where the, this is the unconscious mind, right? It's like there's no consciousness in that decision. Are you conscious of the fact that you're trading a non-renewable resource for a renewable one? Are you conscious of the fact that you're trading something that you don't really care about that much for something that you really do? Are you conscious of that? Are you conscious that this is a cause and effect relationship? If you choose the non-renewable resource, you lose, or, or if you choose the, the renewable resource, you lose the non-renewable one, which is more important to you. Are you aware that that's the effect of this cause? It comes back to that initial consciousness, right? It's like you're completely, if these money arguments are going on, you're completely unconscious in the moment. You're mm -hmm. running your parents' money programs or you're running your society's money programs or you're running your church's money programs or you're running, you're running some money program that simply is not serving you right now. And you're running it from a place of a lack of consciousness that's causing you to make cause decisions that are going to produce effects that you're not going to want to deal with down the road. Oh my goodness. All right, my friend. Well, I'm going to ask you one more question here because I know your time is super valuable. And I mean, I'd love to have you back on because I mean, we could probably yeah. do a good couple of hours of yeah. conversation. That's for sure. Um, I think that my next, my last and final question for you is what is about around re rebuilding trust? Yeah. Um, what steps can a couple take? to rebuild their trust after it has been broken as such after an affair or, you know what? I can't even, even just an affair. My husband used to lie so much. Um, and I'm going to bring this a little bit personally, if you don't mind, yeah, he used yeah. to lie so much because he was afraid of conflict um, that it he might as well have cheated on me because that betrayal felt the same. So how can we as men and women really get past that and be able to continue to support our partners properly and not be so jaded and angry. So I think, I think the, 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 the main answer to that question is you've, you've got to become secure in yourself to where you're not finding your identity or your worth in their behavior. Like your, your husband, he, he, he's wounded. He's a wounded animal. And if we look at him like, well, why is this guy lying? Is he lying, lying because he's an evil, evil, wicked person? No, you said it yourself. He's lying because he's afraid of conflict. Well, what's happened to cause him to be afraid of conflict? What pain has he suffered? What right, childhood wound? Yeah, what childhood wound has he gone through that he's defending himself again against? And it's like it's very easy to attack that behavior, which he's trying to defend himself against the result, and then we just become more of the result he's trying to defend himself against. But, you know, this is why we've got to really focus on ourselves. Like, I don't work with couples because it's about you becoming strong enough to be in a relationship. It's not about fixing the relationship. It's about you becoming strong enough to be in this relationship. Being in a relationship is a grown-up activity. It's a grown-up. It's for grown-ups. It's not, you know, the high school thing is for high school. It's like a real mature adult relationship is, is big boy 
stuff, right? Put your big boy pants on and this is going to be difficult. And and step number one is getting to the point of you, you've got to separate the the behavior from the person. And you've got to you've got to attack. Like a lot, of, a lot of times with the men I work from, with they, uh, men I work with, they take it very personally. My wife's attacking this, and my wife's attacking me on that. No, no, she's not attacking you. She's attacking the behavior. You're not attacking your husband. You're attacking the dishonesty. If we're going to yeah. be in a relationship, dear husband, dishonesty is an issue for me. You're not. Yeah. It, it's really when we break it down. You, you. It's an act of love for you because you're telling him what you, what needs to happen to 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 maintain and keep the relationship whereas he's taking it as a personal attack and will feel like you're trying to end the relationship so that's why See, well we did yeah 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 and it, but it wasn't for it wasn't negative but anyway sir go finish up there sir yeah yeah it, it it's you know we could call it a bulletproof vest right it's like we've got to put a bulletproof vest on and, and it's a case of the the person's behavior they're you know the, we're all wounded Mm-hmm. We're all damaged goods and we're all just trying to get through life without being hurt anymore and without hurting anybody that's all we're trying to do honestly very very few people are actually going out there with intention to do damage there's a few like you know the psychopaths and stuff like that but not like it's not it's not the epidemic of narcissism that people think it is i mean we're talking like one in ten thousand people maybe or something like that and it's right. totally not your right. husband or wife you know your husband or wife is you know, we go, oh, they're just super selfish. Well, they're just doing what you're doing. They're just trying to defend themselves and protect themselves from more pain. They're just doing it in a different way. That's all it is. And when and when we can look at the other person, this is where we talked about that the behaviors, right? That get a positive life or happy life, unconditional positive regard. Like yeah. I'm going to choose to look at my wife with unconditional positive regard. No matter what I see, I'm going to find a way to frame it that supports her and our relationship. If she's behaving in a way that's very, very negative right now, I'm going to, I'm going to say she's just trying to avoid more hurt. She's just trying to avoid emotions that are very painful to her. She's not attacking me. She's not being negative. She's just trying to get through life without being hurt anymore. And this is an opportunity for me to step alongside her and go, seems like you're in a lot of pain right now. See, seems like you're going through something right now versus going, this behavior has got to go. I don't like this at all. I love how aligned we are because I actually took a course a few years back on how to recognize and help people energetically release childhood wounds. And it was probably the best thing I ever did. And a lot of the language that you're using right now is exactly what I say to people all the time is, you know, when you're thinking, I try really, really hard now. I mean, all this happened after I was divorced. And if I had done this beforehand, it might've looked a little differently, but, um, it's one of those things where you got to look at the person's heart. If you're married to this person, you married them for a reason. And it was probably because they had a good heart. And so if you recognize that heart in somebody, then when they are acting out of sorts, it's a lot easier to be like, no, like this is totally out of character. What's going on? Like, yeah. well, how are you feeling? What's going on? Right. And so I just love that. Um, another big thing with that recognizing is when you can recognize that wound inside of you and that pain inside of you, well, you know, quit taking, quit being so personal and look at that other person. And if you've got this wound guaranteed, they probably have something similar because like attracts like a lot of the time, of course. right? And negative can attract a negative a lot of times. So I find that you end up being circled around a lot of people who have the similar wounds and just some of us have the opportunity and have been inspired to grow past those and other people haven't. So I just want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. Uh, it's been a true Congrats. blessing. And I I would love for you to just let people know where to find you um, because anybody benefits from what you got going on here. <laughs> yeah, better, bettermarriage.com.au is is the website. Also, I post to, to YouTube on a very regular basis. So I think that's Better Marriage by Cody Butler. But if you search Cody Butler and Better Marriage on YouTube, you'll find probably got three or 400 videos at this point. So we've got, we've got wherever you're at, we'll meet you there. If you know, if you're just looking for some free advice, we'll meet you there. If you're looking for coaching, we'll meet you there. If you're looking for some serious help, we'll meet you there as well. Wherever, wherever you're at, we've got resources for you. So YouTube better marriage by Cody Butler or bettermarriage.com.au, The two places that I really can be found.